Okay, here we are. I'm going to change pace again up a little bit. This is a customer that um, a few months back sent me a Volvo head. This is a four cylinder head. I'm thinking it's an early 80s Volvo. Uh, I haven't got specific on the date and stuff yet, but uh, he wanted to make it a performance Volvo. Apparently, there's a group of these people. I don't know if they're racing it or some kind of autocross or whatever it is, but he's actually engineered him his own intake manifold. He sent me some photos of it. It's pretty cool using one and five eighths pipe and connecting it all together. So what I'm going to do here, this is getting a stage three port job. And since it's a head that I haven't, I've done a few of these back in the early 90s. They were using it through all terrain races like Woods Top Autocross. So it's been a while. So what I'm going to do, notice I got the old Sonic Checker right here. I'm going to hit the bowl area and some on the roof. I've already looked at where it was at. I'm going to write some of my measurements. And uh, we're not going oversize on the valves. It was next to impossible, short of paying about $30 to $40 a valve to have a custom set made. It would have really been nice because I could see it could have used it a little better. But we're going to use the stop valve diameter and also reshape this combustion chamber. Now this is kind of unique because i never seen a chamber look so much like a Pontiac combustion chamber on a four-cylinder and that being a foreign car. It's really amazing. So I'm going to get you some close-up shots. We're going to uh, fire up the lights and I'm going to show you some of the Sonic, the thickness on it, because he said there's a lot of you Volvo guys out there, a lot of you DIY guys that do your own stuff. Maybe this will help you looking at the thickness of it and some of the mods so you can do this stuff yourself if that's what you want to do. That's the purpose of what I do. It's actually a very good shape port. This thing has got a tremendously tall short turn radius, a good bow height to work with the back short turn of the roof. Got a lot of advantages. We're going to be putting bronze guides in this. Uh, my four angle valve job, stage three porting, and uh, we I just got the head back from milling. We had 60 thousandths milled off this. Apparently that's something they do to get uh, the compression in it. This guy was very knowledgeable on his head. So for you Volvo guys or four cylinder heads, the point I'm, I'm, I wanted to say, it don't matter what head it is, whether it's a Chevrolet, a Ford, a Volvo, a four cylinder, the mathematics of the port applies to every single one out there. Once you go in there and you touch that head with a die grinder, it's not a Volvo, it's not a Chevrolet, it's not a Pro Comp, it's not a Dart. You're going in there and putting your own shape and design in the head and for creativity people, that's priceless, which I kind of consider myself in that area. I love to take a shape, figure it out in my mind, draw it on paper and plan it in the head, and that's pretty much what we're doing right here. Can't get too intense as a stage three won't let me go too far, but it will be a very gone through stage three. All right, let's get some close-up shots. And let's take a look at some sonic checking work with our trusted CWG2BHJ sonic checker. While we're on the subject of sonic checking, I want to break away a minute because this directly relates to another issue that I want y'all to know. Uh, I just went in there and started to do some checking and I noticed that the numbers didn't make sense. I recently tuned it up, new batteries, cleaned it up, and tried to recalibrate the electronics. But I never actually did it. Now what we got, this is your test plate. It's a piece of cylinder wall shaved off in steps. And the numbers that I got on this thing, I write on the board, 64 on the low side, 64 on the high side. Now, notice I've got a low side calibration and a high side calibration because you want to check two different thicknesses. What I'm looking for here is a 64. Now I take the piece and I take my 
white lithium, you have to put a dip on it. All of them has to have that. It adds to the contact area of this thing being a sender and a receiver. Now, I put it on the low side. 65 thousandths. I might even not even touch that, but just for purposes. See, I need to be back up. Just to tell, and remember, we're playing with one thousandth here. Now, when I get the low side done, I read dip, come across the high side, and we're looking for 144. Okay, there. See, just ever a little so much will pull it right up. Then I double hit it again to make double sure. I mean, I'm dancing right there at 133, 144. Then I go back one last time and I check because anytime you move it, it'll change it a little bit. I'm going to leave that alone because I'm within 1,000. It's 63, which should be 64. The other side's 144. This thing is now dead nuts on the money. All right, now what I do at this point, I've already recorded one measurement. Okay. Um, I didn't get real precise on... When I'm feeling it out, I don't mark every single 300 thousandths, but I went down. This is showing about halfway up the bowl from the guide. That's what that means to me. Right here is near the edge of the valve seat. Now, I've already picked 202, so I know I've got 200 thousandths there. Uh, right off the bat, that tells me... Uh, I'd like to have seen about 250 to 260, but on the side where I hit is also right next to the exhaust port. So let's take a look at the port here. You can pick up or see where I got it. All right, right there is where I hit this thing on this side. And um, right around here, about halfway up, that was my pickup point. That's where I got 202. Well, look, it's right beside here, and this is always where the problem comes in at, of it being thin here. Now, this side over here should be a little bit thicker. I'll go over here and hit that side on the exhaust just to confirm, but that tells me about what I can do. And this is where the trick comes in of knowing your valve diameters. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, after measuring it, looking at the thickness, it couldn't stand too much more of a valve diameter. What the bigger valve diameter would do would give me a better turning radius out of the chamber. Yeah, I'd like to have it, but you know what? I believe staying with the stock size valve diameter was the way to go. If I'd have went bigger, it wouldn't have created much more horsepower. Going to the biggest valve I could stuff in here was probably be about 50 thousandths over what I'm gonna use. Uh, horsepower wise it might give me five or six more horsepower but that'd be about it <coughs> so anyway I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna try to get it where you can see them both I think that's as good as I'm going to get. Now I'm going to come up here some on the higher side. That makes perfect sense right there. 240. Because it's always a little thicker now when it gets near the seat. Now this is where it can surprise you. She can go high or low, just like playing a deck of cards. Let's go deep near the guide to match the other one. Looking at about 240, 250. All right, now I'm getting somewhere. All right, 230 thousandths. 
So see, it did grow a little bit. 230, and now let's do one at the top. Now, that's our difference right there. It's totally, this is totally expected. Because we got thicker over here where it goes into the chamber wall. Let me zoom in. See, we're next to an intake port. We got a water passage going through, whereas here we was right next to the exhaust and the valve being close to it didn't give me room. They're more spread out here. So I got uh, 300 at the top, 230 midway. Now the last area that I'm going to check is going to be on the bottom side. You see me verify the number, so I'm not going to worry about setting that up. Let's look at All right, 210. Okay. Okay, now we're going to hit the top side. Wow, on the long term side, ladies and gentlemen, we got 175. Now, I don't usually ever go back and hit the short term side, and I'll tell you why. I don't grind a lot of meat out right here, and that's usually where it's fairly thick, almost all heads, like right now. I'm coming up with uh, 320 thousandths. So I'm gonna write it 320. All right. Now let's see what I've got here in terms of real world modification. There's our markers. See? Long turn, short turn, right, left. Medium, top, medium, top, medium, top, medium to top, right there. At not much because, like I said, the only thing I do is straighten that. I don't alter. Now, let's stand back a minute and let's look at the chalkboard. All right. Do you get the picture now? Do you see why it is so important that the sonic checker, I just, I just, uh, maybe it was the way I was brought up on it from the beginning in 1988, 89 when I started my life's adventure. This tells the story. I know I ain't got to worry about here. I can straighten that up. The danger zone is going to be right here at the 202, which is right next to what? Remember what we talked about? We got this exhaust port right there. Because there's so much heat on the exhaust, this is what I have to pay attention to. Now notice right here, we're at 175 on the long term. You say, wow, you got to watch it there too. Not really, because that area is not an area that's got to have a lot of meat taken out of it. The two sides have to have meat cut to form the shape in the back side in the front. I'm not really worried about this because there ain't a lot of meat has got to take out. So I'll start my chopping left and right to set the circles up with my fear factor and worry being right here because of the heat. But you can stand back and I already can look at this, you know, years of doing it. I know how much more valve diameter I could put in it. Whatever the stop valve is, I could throw 50 thousandths to 60 thousandths more valve diameter to utilize these numbers. Cost and expense of the valve, the true gain that you get out of it though, ain't worth it. We need to go about, I don't know, a hundred thousandths. There's not enough meat there in the port on valve diameter. So I just wanted to show you these are the numbers you look at. That's the one you pay attention to. Since that's the main one, what we would end up being is 202, 202, 202, 202, 202 or 200 thousandths, the modification is the weakest link. That's the one you pick to start do your grinding on because none of them matter. If you try to go off one of them, you're going to bust here. 
That's the point. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the roof and uh, write my numbers on that. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to go ahead and begin the grinding. I am, after looking at this, going to be able to guarantee this young man is going to have a considerable amount of horsepower gain on this four-cylinder engine by having me do the stage three modifications to it. It's going to greatly enhance it over what it is stock. But I just wanted to show you when I'm sonicing, looking at it on this, even though it's a Volvo head, a Nissan head, a Pro Comp head, this is uh, what I call intel gathering. <laughs> military. My whole family's military but me. But this is figuring it all out before I go in there to cut it. And right now it looks like we're going to greatly be able to help this Volvo guy, but there has been a lot of heads that have come in, and when somebody brings it to me, if it ain't something that I've worked on before, I go in there and sonic it and look at them, and I've had to turn them away and go, buddy, I could, if I was a crook right now, I'd tell you great things, charge you the money, shine it, and go, but when I get real thin thicknesses, like when I start seeing 100 and 125, that's when I tell the customer, there's nothing I can do for you. I can't help you because there's no meat there. I can't reshape. I'll bust your head. So, anyway, that's all for right now on the Volvo.